have you been contemplating this for a long time and just are unable to take the plunge, make the leap? You don't know if weed is addictive. Is it a drug? Is it not a drug? Is it bad for you? All these questions I am going to try to address in this video and this video series. This is a collaboration that I was a part of with the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, Canada. It's the biggest mental health hospital in Canada and it's often perceived as the leader in the field, the expert on these matters. That's probably debatable, but that's not the point of this video. So we are going to review the video series I did with them and I'm going to give a little bit more commentary on that and more insights. So without further ado, I will start playing the video and I will stop it when it's time to uh, give some insight. If you struggle with your cannabis use, you are not alone. People start using cannabis for a variety of reasons, like using for social situations or to deal with anxiety or sadness. Over time, it can stop being helpful and become problematic. Many people may use cannabis to cope with stress. Everyone experiences stress and has different ways of coping with it. Some of our coping mechanisms move us toward health and some move us away from it. Healthy coping mechanisms include exercise or meditation. Avoiding the problem or using substances are less healthy coping mechanisms. When stressed, we can leave behind healthy coping mechanisms and pick up less healthy ones without even realizing it. If you can learn to be more aware of when you feel stress, difficult emotions, or the urge to use cannabis, you can pause and strategize how you can manage in a healthier way. Remember, addiction is not a moral failing. It is a mental health condition that many people experience. One in three adults who use cannabis will develop a problem due to their use, and one in 11, or 9%, will become addicted to it. The risk is greater for those who started smoking cannabis as teens, 17%, and for those who smoke cannabis daily, 25 to 50%. If you are ready to make changes to your cannabis use, I'm just gonna pause there for a second. I check a lot of those boxes. I started smoking weed when I was 12, and I was a full-on daily user for the next 17, 18 years. I just want to point out, this comes up a lot in addiction conversations. It's not a moral failing. And in, in some sense, I agree with that. Although those of us who fall into the trap of addiction tend to behave in ways that we don't like and that we consider morally bad. So this isn't sort of a condemnation on you as a human being. It's more of a reflection on the choices that you make, the behaviors that you engage in. And most of us uh, are not proud of those behaviors. So whether or not you consider that a moral failing, I do think separating it into this brain condition that's not connected to your personality or your morality, I don't think it's actually very helpful. As you can see, they started out the video from a very broad perspective. How do you cope with stress? You know, there are many, some definitions of addiction describe addiction as uh, coping with internal pain or trauma or difficulties. So they're kind of pointing to that. Another definition that I've spoken about before on this channel that I like from uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman is the narrowing of things that bring you pleasure. So for me in this context, as a teen, I started smoking very young. I started daily 24 hour seven use all many of my interests and things I love to do in my life kind of slowly got pushed away. Anyhow, let's get back to the video and we'll keep going. If you are ready to make changes to your cannabis use. It is important to get specific about the personal reasons why you want to make those changes. Take time to reflect and write your top three sources of motivation. Make a list and keep it with you or post it in easily seen places like your fridge, bathroom mirror, or the places you usually store or consume your cannabis. Problematic cannabis use can negatively impact your health. I love that they point to this. You need to know why you want to stop. For me, it was I could not stand living one more second like the way I was living. So that was my physical and psychological health. Another big motivator for me was I always wanted to be a dad and I was married. I just gotten married at the time right before I stopped. And I knew if I continued living my life the way I was going to live it, my marriage wouldn't last and my dream and desire of being a dad would have disappeared. So 
up until this day, my why, the reasons why I maintain a, a sober life still exist and they still really matter to me. So I do really like their suggestion there. Take a moment, pause the video right now, write down your top three reasons that you want to stop. Carry that list with you everywhere, read it all the time, become the reason why, and that will provide you with a great source of motivation and at least a direction to move towards. Like increasing your risk of cancer and damaging your lungs and heart. It can also have harmful effects on your mental health, including your cognition, memory, and concentration. It can also have a negative impact on mood. While cannabis can be helpful in the short term, long-term studies show that it can reduce your mood overall. Using cannabis can increase your risk of injury, particularly from falls or accidents due to impaired driving. It can cause financial problems or put a strain on your relationships. For example, your significant other may be upset by how much you spend on cannabis and repeatedly ask you to quit. It can also reduce your performance at school or work and your ability to do household chores or recreational activities. Some people want to change their cannabis use to regain a sense of control. Others want to make changes for practical reasons, such as reducing the smell of cannabis on their clothes or not needing to frequently leave events to go smoke. Another tip you could take with you here would be write down a list of all the problems in your life that result from you getting high. That's a pretty logical thing to do, I think. And the things they brought up there, other than the car accident, I guess, I certainly had problems with my wife and other people in my life. I had problems maintaining daily tasks, doing the things I was gonna say I was gonna do. Those of us who are at a point of wanting to change and knowing we have a problem, know that these things happen. We just have to be more honest with ourselves about it and get really get real about the problems we're causing to other people and to ourselves and our lives. And here's a great way to do that. Just write a list out, start jotting them down, get real. And uh, that's a, another part of the process. Other people want to make changes after witnessing the problems cannabis has caused for people in their lives. I first started using drugs and alcohol at 16 years old. Then I, I tried it one time just to impress a girl. In the beginning, I controlled cannabis. But very quickly, cannabis controlled me. I felt so good. I could hide from life. Life was like a big game of hide and seek where I would open the door and there's my hiding spot. That was my drugs. So many casualties. After three failed marriages, several lost jobs, and my family that I loved being terrified of me, it was time for change. Finally, I got to the end of the road and I said, I just can't do this anymore. I had a sister at that point that hadn't spoken to me in 15 years because of my abuse, because of my actions, because of the lifestyle I was leading. If you would like to make a change and are not sure where to start, remember that one size does not fit all. Just want to pause it there as a great example by that gentleman who collaborated on this project with us. All the things in our lives slowly disappear. Right? We lose our friends, we lose our jobs. And this isn't true for everybody, of course, which is actually a bit of a problem. One of the very difficult things about weed use is that we have the illusion of functionality. We can pretend that we're okay, oh, it's not that bad. Although, if we can get honest with ourselves deep down inside, we know it's not okay. And we know it's getting in the way of us living our best life. And part of this process is, is that rigorous honesty with yourself as if you're new to the channel or to these weed videos, there's lots of content around the self-deception, the lying that you can find that I think will be helpful for you. We'll post uh, the links to the playlists in the chat here. Nevertheless, going back to that last person, just see if you resonate with the idea of hiding from life. I love that hide and seek thing that he described as very wise. Another thing that you might consider here is, and this was told to me by one of my mentors, normal people change their behavior to meet their goals. Addicts change their goals to meet their behaviors. So are you changing your goals because you know you can't achieve them because of your addiction? It's a good question to ask. Okay, we'll keep going. The first step is to become aware of when you feel the urge to use cannabis so that you can make changes and cope with these cravings. Quitting cold turkey or all at once is the best option for some people. 
However, it is not the only option. Some people choose to cut down or reduce the amount of cannabis they consume first. Start with an experiment or small change that you can make right now. This can include going for a quick walk around the block when you feel stressed, cutting out one joint in the day, or switching to an edible containing less THC. You can also try to stop using cannabis once or twice a week and see how you feel. Identify small changes that you can make to start your journey toward getting control of your cannabis use. Get as specific as possible and write them down. My own son at 26 came to me and he was so ashamed because I chose drugs and alcohol over him and his mom. I didn't do that intentionally, but that's what my addiction did. But my son and I work on the same job sites together now. We work together, we're a very cohesive unit, and we're best friends. My sister that at that time hadn't spoken to me reached almost 20 years, but last week, finally, finally, we were able to at least begin a reconciliation. We're talking, we're meeting, she looks me in the eye, she says she's proud of me. If I made the same effort to get clean that I make to get drugs, then I should be able to do this. I would always make sure that my addiction was taken care of. Well, now in recovery, I'm making sure that my recovery is taken care of. Anything that I put before recovery, I will lose. My recovery comes first. I'm going to pause it there because that's a wonderful saying, if you will, in the recovery world. If you put anything in front of your recovery, you will lose it. If you put your job, your relationship, your kids, your whatever, you'll focus more on other things than on keeping yourself straight and well. Therefore, you won't be able to do those things. So because I put my recovery first and did, especially in the beginning, sometimes I'm not so perfect after all these years is that it enables me to be a good father. It enables me to be a good husband, son, brother, citizen in the world. As long as I'm making sure I'm taking care of myself first, then I can be the best version of myself and take care of others. To just go back briefly in the video where they were talking about different approaches. So yes, certainly it can be an all or nothing thing, just total abstinence. Other people find slowly cutting down is helpful, experimenting with different ways of, of reducing your use. I'm not here to tell you one way or the other what you should be doing. I think, again, as I've mentioned, the most important thing is that you are just honest with yourself. Can I cut down? If I'm cutting down, am I thinking about it all the time? Am I obsessing over when I'm going to get high and all these other kind of things? So there are different approaches. Experiment with different ones. See what works for you. Be honest with yourself and of course ask for help if you need it you reflect on the changes you want to make how ready are you to make those changes how confident are you that you can make progress toward your goals set a date for the changes you intend to make and stick to it remember that there may be challenges and you may relapse that is completely normal and not a sign of failure rather it is part of the process keep focused on your journey toward your goals as you start to cut down your cannabis use I just want to jump in there. I agree. Relapse is not failure. I think I relapsed every day for 15 years or so once I knew I should stop or I wanted to stop. So different people have different experiences. Even the notion of relapse can be considered differently for different people. Just remember it's a journey. There's no finish line. One foot in front of the other, one day at a time. You know where you want to go. There's some good tips here. Write why, set a date understand what could get in your way and make that plunge. You may also experience withdrawal symptoms. These can include lower mood or anxiety, fever or chills, trouble sleeping, low appetite, sweating. Watch the other videos in this series for more tools and tips to help you make changes in your cannabis use, develop healthy coping mechanisms, and manage withdrawal symptoms. Your confidence will increase as you learn new skills and see positive changes in your relationship with cannabis. I hope I can give you that little sparkle, that little sparkle of hope, that little bit of recovery. Because now, through speaking, through changing my actions, I'm starting to get the hardest respect of all. I'm starting to get self-respect. Never, ever in my wildest dreams did I dream life could be this good. And I'm telling you, dare to dream. Dare to dream. But it's up to you to fulfill your dreams. I love that notion of self-respect, right? This is about building self-respect 
believing you deserve goodness and healing your past karma of treating yourself like shit, lying to yourself, being deceitful and all the bad behaviors associated with getting high all the time. So you do deserve it. I wish you all the best. I will put the link to the original video series in the description for this. And please, as always, comment, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Share this with someone you think might find it useful. And I will see you in part two. Take it easy. Bye. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.